Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Floyd Richmond and you are listening to Music from a Christian Perspective. Uh, this is a course description I'd like to just uh, review with you for the course uh, Introduction to Music Studies in the Context of Christian Worldview. Examination of Biblical, Philosophical, and Scientific Bases for Human Creativity. Discussion of Music's Role in Society and in the liberal arts context. Orientation to college level work in music including diagnostic examination of background knowledge. Two credit hours, it's a liberal arts course. That we are going to be looking at uh, music from a Christian perspective. We're going to be influenced by the Bible, we're going to be influenced by philosophy, and we're going to be influenced by science. And we will in particular focus on human creativity. There are three textbooks uh, one of them is a biblical uh, philosophical approach. One of them is definitely a philosophical uh, scientific approach. And the third of them is a little bit more psychological uh, scientific. Before we get into any of the textbooks, we're still working out of the Bible. We could extend our study just a little bit to look at some practicing worship leaders. So uh, there's one worship leader in particular that I would like you to know about. His name is Matt Redman and he has written a song called The Heart of Worship. Now many of you are probably already well acquainted with it but if not I would just invite you to uh, Google that uh, video on YouTube and to go ahead and watch it. The Heart of Worship. In fact you should pause the video now, listen to the song and then return. Okay, welcome back. What I'd like to do now is to have you listen to this Matt Redman interview. And you can once again just uh, Google Matt Redman interview. What I'd like you to do is to go ahead and uh, be examining these questions as you are listening to this next video, if you would. These are the questions you'll be writing on this week. What is worship? How, what, <laughs> what role does music play in worship? And how do Matt Redmond's thoughts help define worship? Okay, so I'm going to uh, give you a moment now to complete listening to the Matt Redmond interview. Just uh, find it on YouTube and pause the video, and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, welcome back. So, what I'd like to do now is uh, just have you look at, once again, these questions. What is worship? What role does music play in worship? And how do Matt Redmond's thoughts help define worship? Now, before I send you off to write this particular essay, what I'd like you to do is consider also one scripture. And this is going to be a scripture that you're going to memorize also. This is Romans 12.1. I'll read it to you now from both the NIV and from the King James Version. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Romans 12.1 NIV. From the King James, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. First of all, who is this scripture addressing? Uh, the NIV says brothers and sisters. Uh, the King James uses a more generic brethren. I think that it's clear to everyone that this scripture is written to every believer, male or female, all brothers and sisters in Christ, this is a plea that Paul makes to all Christians. This plea, what is the plea? By the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. You'll find in one of our first reading assignments that uh, this sacrifice is an outpouring, a continuous giving. Oh, and so that actually gets into the next question. When and where? 
a living sacrifice is an ongoing and continuous sacrifice is music a part of the believer's life music music is to be a part of the worship of the believer is work or study a part of the believer's life work and study are to be parts of the believer's life is play and entertainment a part of a believer's life those things are to be a part of the living sacrifice that we make unto god why why do we need to do these things because of the mercy of god i urge you by the mercies of god that you would do these things and why else because this is your reasonable service our god deserves our service and we are required a service is not something that is optional it's something that is required we are required to serve our god with a living continual sacrifice which is indeed as the niv says your true and proper worship i would just like to say again you can get hung up on all the different versions of the bible but the two of these in particular and any others that you may read that are true sincere attempts to translate the word of god give us wonderful insights on a consistent theme about the word of god and what it means okay so let's get back to your assignment here if we could your assignment is to answer these questions what is worship what role does music play in worship how do Matt Redmond's thoughts help define worship? How does Romans 12.1 help define worship? Okay, those are the four questions that you should address. You should write an essay. I'm going to limit you to no more than two pages. I'm very happy if you get up to 250 words. One page, limit, no penalty for going over. There might be a little penalty for going under unless you are wonderfully concise. But uh, please go ahead and address these four questions. What is worship? What role does music play in worship? How do Matt Redmond's thoughts help define worship? And how does Romans 12.1 help define worship? Okay, that's going to be everything for this lecture. Thank you very much. May God richly bless you.